Did you know that Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos and Bernard Arnault, the giants of our modern world have a combined fortune of a mind-boggling 559 billion dollars. It literally surpasses the total GDPs of 152 countries. The quantity is so vast that the sheer number of zeros it contains would take you an extensive amount of time to calculate. But now, picture a scenario where an individual strolls into a town and hands out tons of gold to anyone and everyone. Imagine how incredibly wealthy he would be. That's the kind of richness we are talking about today. A man whose wealth wasn't measured in billions like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, it was measured in kilograms to tons of gold. A man whose generosity shook cities and sparked hyperinflation, making today's inflation look like pocket change. History has evidence of his unimaginable and uncountable wealth and gave him the title of the richest person ever documented in history. He was Mansa Musa, the golden emperor of the kingdom of Mali. Back in 1235, Sanyara Kaida, founder of Mali Empire, known as the Lion King, created a centralized government by uniting different tribes with different cultures and languages. This union was the beginning of the region's most successful empire, lasting from the 13th to the 17th century, covering an estimated 420,000 square miles. The empire spanned from the Atlantic Ocean to the Niger River, extending from the Sub-Saharan regions to the equatorial African forests. Its territorial presence extended across what is now known as modern-day Mali, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Mauritania, and portions of Niger and Burkina Faso. Mali occupies an incredibly strategic position in West Africa. During peak times of the Mali Kingdom, approximately half of the world's gold originated from this region. To your surprise, even in modern times, Mali continues to hold significance as the fourth largest gold producer in Africa and the 15th largest globally. But it wasn't all about gold. Enormous reserves of salt and elephant ivory also played a crucial role. Do you imagine the same salt we casually sprinkle on our tables had the most crucial role in their lives? Back in the early ages, salt wasn't just about flavor or dietary requirements. Rather, it was a vital preservative for them, safeguarding their food from spoiling. It was as valuable as gold. The Kingdom of Mali had huge salt reserves, aiding its due economic position at that time. But their success wasn't just about what they had, it was also thanks to the Trans-Saharan Trade Route, also known as the Gold Trade Route. A route that connected West Africa to the Mediterranean, just like a busy highway and also attracted world intellect into the kingdom. Think of it like caravans carrying not just staff but also cool ideas and different ways of doing things. Mali wasn't just a rich kingdom, it was like a busy center where loss kept happening and those echoes of their success still stick around today. Mansa Abu Bakr II, the title Mansa wasn't just a name but a symbol of power like Pharaoh for the Egyptians. Mansa Abu Bakr II decided to venture beyond the Atlantic Ocean for exploration even 150 years before Christopher Columbus. Abu Bakr II prepared 200 ships filled with men laden with gold, water, and provisions to sustain them for years. They embarked on their journey, but a considerable time passed before any ship returned. Eventually, one solitary ship made its way back with the news of the tsunami. Undeterred, Abu Bakr II decided to make another attempt in 1312. This time, he readied a fleet of 2,000 ships and set off on a journey. 
Unfortunately, that marked the last sighting of him and all those who accompanied him. As per kingdom tradition, Abu Bakr II appointed Musa Qaeda as the temporary mansa of the kingdom until his return. So in 1312, Musa Qaeda became Mansa Musa, and he is the dad Mansa Musa who later earned the extraordinary distinction of being recognized as the wealthiest individual in recorded history. In the meantime, Mansa Musa showcased his intellect and with a keen focus ran the government exceptionally well. His immense wealth wasn't solely a struck of luck, it was a testament to his strategic mindset and exceptional administrative skills that made him incredibly successful. Mali Kingdom holds ownership of all the gold and salt mines in the region. In a strategic move, Mansa Musa set a portion of the profits from traders passing through the gold trade route. The wealth accumulated by just tax was immense. As a result, the Mali Kingdom ascended as an economic powerhouse, supported by a strong army that facilitated its expansion by conquering. During this era, there were no significant competitors to challenge Musa's authority. With undivided attention on economics, Mansa Musa propelled Mali to become a dominant world economic power of the time. Motivated by a deep desire to impact the Muslim world politically, Musa, a devout follower of Islam, made a momentous decision reflecting his commitment to shaping positive change and influence within the community. In 1324, he embarked on his famous pilgrimage journey to Mecca. This pilgrimage proved to be not only an act of religious duty, but also a strategic move to showcase his wealth and influence on a global scale. This wasn't an ordinary pilgrimage. Mansa Musa traveled with an astonishing entourage of 60,000 people, including 12,000 slaves, dozens of camels, laden with 136 kilograms of gold each, 100 elephants, and the list goes on. Mansa Musa carried this vast amount of gold not for mere show, but to fulfill the Islamic practice of zakat. Throughout his journey, he distributed his wealth to the poor, showcasing his generosity. While in Cairo, Mansa Musa's encounter with the Sultan of Egypt became a legendary tale. Such a large amount of gold was given away by Mansa Musa that it triggered a recession. Egyptian history saw a drastic decrease in the overall value of gold for the next 10 years. Renowned Syrian traveler Al Umari, who visited Cairo city 12 years after Mansa Musa, narrated that the people of Cairo were still admiring Mansa Musa's generosity. According to estimates by US-based technology company SmartAsset.com, the depreciation of gold caused by Musa's lavish spending led to approximately $1.5 billion in economic losses across the Middle East. Arab historians emphasize that Mansa Musa's extravagant spending was so extensive that it resulted in the rate of the gold dinar fell by six silver dirhams. The tales of Mansa Musa's wealth weren't confined to just Africa, they made their way to Europe too. In 1375, the Spanish cartographer Abraham Criscus crafted a map known as the Catalan Atlas showcasing West Africa dominated by a captivating depiction of Mansa Musa. In this portrayal, he sits regally on a throne clutching a nugget of gold in one hand and a golden staff in the other. The Catalan Atlas wasn't just a map, it was the canvas that painted Mansa Musa as a symbol of opulence for generations to come. Fast forward to today, people are still on the hunt for his gold. This has attracted European fortune hunters and explorers. Some have even found the mines that Mansa Musa used to own. It's like a modern treasure hunt, all because of Mansa Musa's generosity 700 years before. Upon his return from Mecca, demonstrating visionary leadership, Mansa Musa carried a vision of transforming the Mali Kingdom into a lasting civilization. He brought scholars, artists, and architects along with him, recognizing that their collective knowledge and skills would turn his dream into reality. 
One of them was Abu Ishaq Isahili, an Andalusian poet and architect who designed the renowned Jingriuriber Mosque, which still stands and is a part of UNESCO World Heritage. As an appreciation for Abu Ishaq Isahili talents, Mansa Musa reportedly rewarded him with 200 kilograms of gold, translated to today's currency equating to almost 8.2 million dollars, which was exceptional. This demonstrates Mansa Musa's profound commitment to arts, culture, and progress. Initiating a transformative era, he did magnificent construction of schools, libraries, and mosques, supporting and creating an environment that valued knowledge and spirituality. Mansa Musa also introduced practical innovations such as a standardized weight and measurement system, a common currency system for the kingdom, with gold thus serving as the medium of exchange. This forward-thinking approach enhanced the economic stability of Mali, making him the world's richest person ever. His actions changed the fate of cities like Timbuktu and Gao, transforming them into cultural centers. Timbuktu in particular evolved into a hub of education, intellectual pursuits, and spiritual richness. The city's golden age is vividly remembered, exemplified by its two magnificent institutions, Jinguribar Mosque and Sankor University, much like today's prestigious institutions such as Oxford and Harvard University today. Timbuktu drew scholars and students from around the world. The Jun Gerber and Sankor, now collectively known as Quranic Sankor University, the oldest higher education institution with millions of manuscripts in its library makes them living monuments. In 1337, Mansa Musa passed away, leaving behind a well-administrated empire that thrived at the time of his death. His son succeeded him, attempting to carry forward the legacy of prosperity. However, despite the initial stability, the empire faced challenges that led to its eventual downfall. Mansa Musa's narrative transcends mere wealth. It's a tale of a man deeply rooted in Islamic faith, shaping the intellectual and cultural tapestry of the Mali Empire.